Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. The other day, my neighbor came over and he told me, well, a few things. It's always great when your neighbor comes over to tell you something, right? So he said, hey, I was having a problem with my van and I was searching it online and come to find out I found your video. So I said, woohoo, perfect. But downside, now I gotta fix this problem. So he's asking away, he said he's having problems pumping gas. Uh, it happened a few weeks ago and I, it, it doesn't get any better. It just puts gas in it and it fills for seconds and then it clicks. Then he's got to go do it again. And he's saying it's 20, 30 times for him to do that to get the fuel tank to fill up. So if you're having that problem, I'm going to tell you the fix or I'm going to show you what I went about to figure out the fix for his real quick. And like, subscribe, and share while you are watching this. If you have any questions, comment below. Make sure you look in my video library to find a video on your vehicle. I have a ton of emissions locations that give you a starting point on how or where to find the components you're looking for and a lot of maintenance uh, such as air filters, cabin air filters and stuff like that. So check out my video library. Now let's get into this. So he was having a problem with pumping gas. Usually at, that is the vapor vent solenoid. The vapor vent solenoid is responsible for letting the pressure escape out of the fuel tank well, in this case, when you're pumping gas. So when there's no voltage applied to a vent solenoid, air should come out or vapors should be released into the atmosphere. On this one, it just gets released out of here. This is where the hose comes up from the canister. Hopefully I have some pictures up here for you. So when he's pumping gas, there's no voltage applied to this. So this is open. Vapors should get released into the atmosphere. There's a couple things that could be wrong inside there dust, dirt, stuff gets built up because fuel expands and contracts with the temperature and humidity and all that stuff. So air needs to go both ways in this. It needs to be released when you're pumping gas. It needs to be sucked in when you get expansion and contraction of the fuel. So this gets dirty, it gets clogged, and this one I think had an intermittent issue. And we just replaced it anyways. He's got over 120,000, 130,000 on that vehicle. It's a delivery vehicle, so it's turned off and on a lot of times a day. So this solenoid is being used a lot, a lot. In this case, you see, you could suck and blow through it, but I made a few videos with it already. There's a ton of dirt in this thing. That is one of the issues. That's one way that this thing could be bad. Dirt built up in here, it gets wet, it gets grimy the diaphragm and everything, the filter, whatnot gets clogged and it doesn't allow flow into the solenoid. So that could be the issue. That's one thing. Another thing could be that you're not getting any uh, voltage applied to the solenoid, which that's a wiring issue. Hopefully that's not your case. Uh, it could be that when voltage is applied, this is not opening. And again, that's the common thing when you can't pump in gas, when you can't pump gas. So we put a new one on. He went to the gas station and you know what? Problem didn't go away. Go figure. And when I tested, I'm like, hey, eh, this, this thing is good. Your vent solenoid is good, but we have another one. This is usually the issue. You have a ton of miles on it. It's going to go bad. What do you want to do? And he said, you know what? It's 50 bucks. Go ahead and throw it on there. Let's see what happens. So he did. It didn't work. Go figure. That's why you should check and see if parts are good before you start replacing them. So you're not just throwing parts at a car like we did. What's next? Then I thought, hey, why would the thing be stopping? What makes it stop? One, the fuel coming up the neck, and it could be no pressure making it through. So I looked up under there, opened up his fuel uh, filler neck or filler, take the cap off. And I looked, I'm like, hey, wait a minute. You have no um, flapper right there. What's going on? And he was like, oh man, you're right. There is no flapper right there. So I started looking around, I'm like, you know, I bet something is inside that hose. The flapper is down inside that hose to where it's causing a restriction and then fuel is coming up the hose, up the filler hose, and then it's hitting the fuel pump, which is making the pump only fill up the hose, but the pump thinks the tank is filling up because the hose is filling up to there. And then when it clicks, it's allowing to drain by really slow because that restriction. So I said, hey, let's see. I took everything apart and you can see right here, took the hose off, everything down to the tank, and sure as heck, 
Inside there was the flapper, the little metal piece that's up there was down inside that hose. But another thing was this, the screen, you can see on the little video, this screen was pushed all the way down. And this is so somebody can't steal your gas or debris go into your tank. Uh, this screen is supposed to be in the hose and it's supposed to stop it. But somebody stole his gas the other day, about a week and a half ago. And we didn't know. So I asked him, I'm like, somebody's siphoning your gas a bit. And that's what I found this. And sure, I told him to check the, the cameras and everything on his house. Somebody did steal his gas about two weeks ago, which is coincidentally right when he had that problem. He came out one morning, he had no gas and said, hey, I got to go get gas. That's the day he had the problem. That was the night he got took for. So this was inside there. I fished it out. And now it's really easy to steal his gas. Well, we put another filler hose on, but it was really easy to fill, steal his gas for a little bit because this was gone. The flapper was gone. It was just going straight down to the tank. Whoops. So in this case, it was a restriction in the fuel filler hose, causing it to keep thinking, causing the pump to keep thinking that the tank was filled up. So it could be very commonly the vapor vent solenoid. But in this case, it was not. And it was something pretty simple when you just took the time to look in the overall perspective of everything. I, I didn't think to check that cap first. Uh, that was the issue, the symptoms he was having wasn't and, and a reason for me to check that. And then after he went and had a problem again, I'm like, wait, something is just not right here. Let's double check. So point, take your time, double check everything. Dot your I's and cross your T's. I've been saying it. If you have any questions, make sure you ask below. Hit me up, text me, 925-418-5096. While it lasts, you can send me a picture uh, with your problem and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I usually try to do like a day or two. Uh, when I get some free time, I, I check out that channel or check out um, the text line and all that and, and give replies. Like, subscribe, share, tell everybody about me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next hopefully helpful video. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies.